Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Friday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met. It is Friday, the 12th of December, and, um, or sorry, the 13th of December, my bad. And uh, for, for this being a quiet winter meeting, for the most part, for the Mets at least, I've actually recorded a video every day this week, and um, I realized after I recorded yesterday's video twice um, because of uh, two different moves, um, I needed to sort of recap something yesterday that I didn't do, and that is giving my basic opinion on what I think about these these moves that the Mets made over the last uh, 36 hours. So on this very brief show, I'm going to talk about the uh, Waka and Porcello signings and how I think they will work out for the Mets in 2020. This is not going to be a long one today um, because I, we talked about the details of these uh, these transactions yesterday, but I, I didn't really give a, th a really thorough opinion of either of these signings that the Mets made. Of um, I, I, these aren't I won't call them bargain basement starters, but pretty close to bargain basement starters um, when it comes to both Waka and Porcello. Um, Porcello, I think, has uh, it, it has a, a little bit better shot to make an impact for the Mets, if only because he's proven to be pretty durable throughout his career. He pitches a ton of innings. Um, he generally stays on the field, although the same could have been said for Todd Frazier before he donned uh, Mets uniform and wound up on the injured list multiple times. So um, there's always that to keep uh, keep an eye on, which is oh so Mets, uh, when guys who, who don't have injury histories end up with injuries. So uh, so for that reason, I think the Por Porcello or Porcello signing rather is um, is is likely to work out better for the Mets, um, only because again I think he can replace a lot of the innings that Zach Wheeler gave the Mets last year. Because remember, Zach Wheeler was going seven innings regularly, and the, the thing I think that we all romanticize about Wheeler, and I I love Wheeler. Don't get me wrong. Um, and yes, he did go seven innings most of the time, but a lot of that time he wasn't pitching at an ace level, right? It was almost like every other start or so, he'd be really good and then he would just be okay. And what, what you need out of that fifth starter is just sort of that, really what Jason Vargas gave the Mets, um, but more length. And I think that's what Porcello can bring to the Mets because if you look at what happened last year with Porcello, his ERA was was elevated. Um, it was among qualifying pitcher pitchers, um, he had the worst or the highest earned run average in all of baseball. Um, take him out of the AL East, where he doesn't have to face the Yankees 19 times a year, where his, uh, I, I think that he started, made four starts against the Yankees in um, in 2019, and I think he gave up 20 runs uh, in those four, four starts, if I remember that stat correctly. So um, I think removing Porcello from the AL East and inserting him into the NL East, while not a cakewalk by any means. The NL East is, is a pretty beastly division when you look at some of the lineups in the division. I mean, you take uh, take the Marlins out of the equation, um, and although they're improving, they're not there yet. Um, the, the, the Marlins really can't be considered, but the Phillies have a really good lineup. Bryce Harper, JT Real Muto, um, Doofy Doof, um, Reese Hoskins. I call him Doofy Doof because he looks like a Doofy Doof. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you look at the Braves, you've got Acuna and Albies and Freeman. Um, thank, thankfully, no Donaldson there um, this year. But, you know, then you look at the Nationals. You've got Soto. You've got um, you've got uh, um, the other kid, Victor Robles, um, Trey Turner. Well, a, 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 this is a really good division as far as the, the offenses are concerned. But it's not the American League East. It is not the power slugging top to bottom, one through nine in the lineup can hurt you kind of division. And I think that's going to improve Porcello's ERA. So uh, of the two between Porcello and, and Waka, um, I, I'm leaning more on Porcello to be the more regular starter of the two. Um, and I think Waka is going to end up as a swing man where he's going to be pitching out of the bullpen some and uh, maybe making some spot starts here and there as needed. Um, the, the concern I have with that, of course, is that if you look at Waka's numbers throughout his career, he is really not very good out of the bullpen. So he, and he never has been. Um, I think he's got a five plus, 
between an ERA between five and six as a reliever. Small sample size, of course. Um, he hasn't pitched a ton of innings out of the bullpen, but um, I, I really feel like like that's where he's going to find himself. And perhaps if he knows that going in, he'll be able to prepare from the start of the season to be a relief pitcher. And maybe just the preparation will, will make it easier for him um, and, and have him improve out of the bullpen. Uh, the one thing that I'm going to be interested in seeing is how Jeremy Hefner interacts with Waka because uh, Waka has a killer changeup. And if he can bring that back, um, that can make him an effective weapon. So we'll, we'll see what ends up happening there. So the bottom line, my opinion on these two deals, they, they're head scratching for me, uh, you know, because the bullpen was the glaring need. And I don't buy the uh, explanation that we don't see enough value out of these guys, uh, that these relievers who are getting these big money deals. Uh, we think we have more value in finding starters for the same money. They can give us more innings and yada yada I just I don't buy that explanation um you know Dellen Batances is it should have been on the Mets list I'm, I'm sorry he should have been and he, he wasn't and now apparently as of as of last night he's no longer um no longer being uh considered now we'll see what happens because of course everyone was saying after Waka was signed uh that uh, Porcello was no longer being considered so I think what ends up happening next in the bullpen is going to be tied to whether or not the Mets can move Jed Lowry's contract. And yesterday there were some rumors coming out about the Texas Rangers being a potential trade partner. And that trade would be uh, Jed Lowry and Dominic Smith in exchange for um, a pretty good relief pitcher who's got a pretty team-friendly contract behind him and Jose LeClerc, who uh, I think saved 14 or 15 games last year. Uh, profiles to be a pretty good young pitcher, um, could be a potential back-end uh, arm for the Mets out of their bullpen. I just don't know why the Rangers would accept that trade. I, I don't. I, I've read it like four different times and in different places. I don't see the upside for Texas. If they want to do it, I mean, I hate to lose Dom. I've said this before, but he's a man without a country with the Mets. Keeping him on the Mets, while it would be fun to see because he just is a delight in the clubhouse, and on the field when he gets on the field, it is stunting his professional growth. So, I mean, he cannot balloon into the player that he might be able to be, being stuck behind Pete Alonso and being relegated to a bench role and spotting in the outfield every now and then where he is clearly overmatched. So, um, as much as I don't want to see Dom go, if the Rangers were to say, you know what, we'll take that deal because we like Dom that much, uh, and, and they're willing to give up Jose LeClerc in exchange and take uh, Jed Lowry's contract too, I'm all about it. I mean, sign me up. So that's I think that's going to predicate what happens next uh, with with the Mets this offseason. And I, I still think they have to address the bullpen somehow. And Michael Walker cannot be the bullpen answer. So um, that's it for today. My opinion is um, head-scratching moves. Not really thrilled about either of them. I can see how they might work, but I can also see how they might not. And I, I think that's the bigger concern for me than anything else while not addressing the bullpen at the same time. So um, next week I'll come back, um, probably not Monday, probably back on Tuesday, um, and uh, chat about where things are at. Then we'll see what happens with this rumored deal with Dom and Texas and Jed Lowry. Um, if that happens, I do expect the Mets to um, have been able to shed some salary there, and maybe they'll be able to sign an additional relief pitcher um, with the uh, couple of coins they find in the bottom of the couch in Jeff's office. So. Uh, until next week, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.